More people pay electronic and computer stores to come in and set up their wireless home network than any other service, and yet it's one of the simplest things that you can do. So let's get started. There are only three steps that we need to follow to set up our home network. First of all, we need to connect to an outside signal. The internet is outside of our house, and we need something to bring it into our house. Secondly, we're going to need something that will broadcast the signal throughout the house so that all the other computers and such can pick it up wirelessly. And third, we need to receive the signal. Our computers need to be set up so that they can capture that signal. Let's start with something that's a little simpler and you probably already have at home, a phone system. If I sent you home with a phone system like this, right out of the box you would probably have no problem. We start with a base unit. We have a power plug that will plug into our power strip here. And we have a phone jack. The phone jack is plugging into the jack on the wall, which is in essence connecting to an outside signal. Now our base unit also will broadcast this signal. Many of you probably have a base unit like this with a little antenna sticking up. So this base unit is fulfilling number one, connecting to the outside signal, and number two, broadcasting the signal throughout the house. Finally, we have little satellite units. These are also wireless. We have generally have a base unit that we plug in only so we could recharge it. This phone is enabled to pick up this signal. So any place you put this in the house, you could be sitting on the couch, you'll be able to pick up that signal. Well, that same principle that we had there, we're going to be doing with our wireless home network. Just take a look over here at a brief chart of what we're going to be dealing with. We're going to have a modem connected to the internet, broadcasting through a router, so that all of our computers can get the signal. This is a modem. The modem connects to the outside world with a coaxial cable. A coaxial cable is the type of cable that has a pin inside, a sharp pin, and your modem will connect at one end to this coaxial cable, and the other end you're going to be screwing into the wall where your cable provider has put a little outlet. When we're talking about a network, your cable provider who also provided this modem, is also called your ISP, or Internet Service Provider. So if someone asks you, who's your ISP, your answer would probably be something like Verizon, Cablevision, Comcast, whoever it is you're paying the bill to every month. So this is connected to our wall, fulfilling number one, connect to an outside signal. And of course, plug it in. Next, we'll need a router. Many routers also have an antenna sticking up because our router is broadcasting the signal throughout the house. Our router, of course, is electronic. It will also plug in. And our router has to be connected to our modem. The kind of wire we use for this is an Ethernet cable. If you look closely at the tips of an Ethernet cable, it looks a lot like a phone cable, but a little bit fatter. Well, there's a spot right here on our router, on our modem, rather, for the Ethernet cable. And then there's a spot here on our router for the Ethernet cable. Step one, connect to the outside signal, broadcast that signal, and finally, we want to receive the signal with our computers. Now, most laptops that you would get nowadays are already equipped to pick up a Wi-Fi signal. It's built into the system. If your computer is not built in, we're going to need something like this. This is a wireless network adapter. We would stick it in with a USB plug right into our computer and have the little antenna sticking up. I have a bunch of them here to show you. Here's another brand, again, a little antenna. You might also have something like this that slides right into your laptop, or a small one that's a little more portable. So if your computer already has 
wireless capability built in, you're all set. We had our modem, we have our router, and we have our computer. Now remember, the modem is coming from your ISP, or Internet Service Provider. Well, my ISP gave me a really nice thing when they came over. This one. It's a modem and a router combined into one. So if you have something that looks like this in your house, you're almost done. This is just going to plug in with the Ethernet cable, and you'll see from the antenna, it's going to broadcast the signal to the rest of the house. Let's look here just to make sure we have all of our terms correct. We talked about a modem, which is connecting to the internet using a coaxial cable, a router, which is broadcasting the signal, and finally, a wireless access point, your computer or a wireless access card. Either way would work. Now, while you're setting all of this up, it would be a nice idea to have a little checklist as you go. On this checklist, I left a spot here for the name of my ISP, or Internet Service Provider, and also their phone number, so if there's a problem. You also would want to put the brand name and model of your modem and your router, because if you do have any problems with your Internet Service Provider, they're probably going to ask you this. So it's a good idea to have it all in one spot. And finally, when you're configuring all of this, they're going to ask you a number of questions. Things like SSID and WIP key. Lots of that information you're going to find right on the side of your equipment. And you can copy it right down. For security reasons, many of these ID and security codes can be changed. And it's a really good idea to change them because if your router is using one security key, you can bet most people's routers are using the same one. So once you've changed it, write in the new one. But the default one is generally written right on the side of your equipment. One more piece of information about this equipment. You may notice that a lot of your equipment is labeled with a number. 802.11b, 802.11g, or 802.11n. That has to do with the speed and quality of the signal being broadcast. The first type of equipment they invented was the 802.11b. That's probably about seven or eight years ago at this point. Then they came out and developed the G level, and now they're up to the N level. They are all cross-compatible. So if you have some equipment that's a G, and some equipment that's a B, they will work together. However, if you're buying new equipment, you might want to remember B will say stands for bad. That's pretty old and pretty slow. G is a good signal. And N is the newest signal they have. It's faster and more powerful than anything else, but it will work with your old equipment. So go home and get started with your router, your modem, and your wireless access point.